Hello there, welcome back to my channel, Snips by Kelly. I'm Kelly and tonight I'm excited to continue on with layout four of the five part Gnomes for Autumn series. So I have posted layouts one, two, and three, those three process videos, as well as an overview and a workshop share of all 10 pages. So tonight we're going to continue on and this is gonna be our easy one. This one isn't going to be tough at all and it's going to be so fun. We're going to focus on adding large Cricut elements to pages that are adorable but that don't make you have to sacrifice photo opportunities. So let's do a recap. Here we have layout number one where we focused on a little bit of inking treatments and adding a couple different styles of Cricut overlays. One with Cricut circles and one which is a stitched frame which I've taught all of you in my Cricut playlist how to create on your own and we had those cute little gnomes popping up out of those circles and it was just so fun. Layout number two we did some Cricut writing and some treatments on that Cricut writing with some background inking and we focused on taking a more blah pattern which in this case is the graph paper and adding inking treatments to that and having a left wow page that is our focal point with a lot of layering and additional texture with a functional page, a page that has lots of photo opportunities. And last week we focused on using background stamping and background ink and blending techniques including splatter to fill in those areas on stark white backgrounds as well as some journaling around the outside, some journal pen around the outside and again layering our cute little stamps and thin cuts um, and having a fun play with those gnomes and the wheelbarrow. So just a quick recap, we're using the Gnomes for Autumn workshop, or not, excuse me, not workshop bundle, but product bundle that has the paper pack and sticker sheet, the coordinating cardstock, the gnome thin cut, the gnomes for autumn stamp and thin cut with the adorable flowers, leaves, and pumpkins, and the gnomes for autumn card making stamp set that has four sentiments on it, and the cork shapes that come right in the product bundle. It's an enormous bundle at a great savings. I also added some lined leaves, which we are using on some of the layouts, and we are doing a little bit of tree treatment with those and I also added season mix-ins which is the September uh, October season mix-ins that launch on September 1st and some of my own Cricut cuts as well as some golden rod stickles and some inking for some techniques. So let's go ahead and get the sizes and the um, parts and pieces out of the way. So we have the pumpkin leaf on the left side which is two and three fourths by twelve. On the right side it's three by twelve. Then we have the stripe on the left side is two and a half by 11. On the right, it's one and a half by 11. And then we have the cute gnome pattern, which is four by 10 on the left and two by 10 on the right. And then next we have the Lime Aid crisscross, which is three fourths by 11 and a half, both on the left and another one on the right. Then we're going to actually add some scarlet that are three and a half by four and a half scarlet cardstock. We need eight of those. And then we're going to have white interior photo mats on those that are three and a fourth by four and a fourth, and we need eight of those. And we're going to be doing eight photos. So we're going to have really large Cricut elements and still be able to have eight photos on this layout. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to place these pieces where I think they're going to go. And it's just a matter of playing and layering. So they're not going to be the same layers on the left as they are to the right. But on the left, the orange leaf is flush to the right edge of the left page. You're gonna overlap the stripe um, and it's gonna hit at about two and a fourth inches. And then the gnome um, is a little less than two and a fourth. And um, the um, actual gnome piece itself will start at about three and a fourth, okay? And then on the right, 
This the orange leaf strip is flush, of course, on the edge, and you're just gonna overlap the green crisscross gnome, and you're gonna overlap that by about a quarter of an inch, and then layer the other pieces flush. And it's really, really simple. Don't worry so much about measurements. You're just going to kind of play with those a little bit, and it's more that those pattern papers peek through, and that you're going to have that nice bit of color behind your photos. I'm going to layer the three horizontal three by four photos that are already matted on the white and the scarlet and I'm going to be pushing them sort of backward and forward and I'll be adjusting those a little bit when we start adding bits and then same with the left ones. We're just going to kind of adjust those inward and outward and we're going to um, add that and so now you can see that I've made that uh, that gnome stripe uh, flush against the striped piece and then I've covered the transition with the lime. I just wanted more of that cute little gnome pattern paper to show and the way that I had the strips before it didn't show as much and there's really really cute icons on that. So I'll be playing with these little layers and with the photos as I add the bits so don't worry about getting it in a permanent position right now. I'm just kind of showing showing you how I'm making space for some extra large, fun, oversized Cricut cuts that we're just going to have a blast with. Okay, so I have this barrel that I created on the Cricut out of light and dark espresso, and I actually added some goldenrod stickles for the bolts to make those bolts kind of stand out just like copper bolts. The second barrel, same size, I actually cut it in half so that I could tuck one barrel behind the other and create a little peekaboo platform for the gnomes. I kind of want the gnomes to just be playful in this and to be peeking out from behind the barrels and you're not actually going to see very much of the gnomes at all. So one of the things that you could do is you simply don't have to cut all of the little bits and pieces for the gnome. Uh, for example, for the boy gnome, if you do the hat and the body and the nose and the beard, that is all that's going to show. I believe I may actually pull a teeny tiny bit of the left arm out. I'll have to double check that here as the video progresses. The little girl here, you can see that I'm starting out trying to sort of find a way to put her on the front and then I do do a little bit of rearranging. I really love the barrel. It's just such a unique, fun Cricut cut. So I end up actually putting the girl gnome over farther on the right. And I actually do make it so the left arm of the little gnome shows. So you could probably get by with just making the one hand instead of cutting the little hands and the little shoes and all of those uh, extra bits there. So I'm actually linking up in the description here here, the first videos. So I have video one that has launched and video two that has launched. And by the time this video launches, video number three will have already been up. So you can check that out. I also in the description have a link to my blog that has some options for this, um, this workshop. So I did not do a full written guide like I normally do for my workshops, but I did do a little cheat sheet that includes the designs space file and a Cricut option for those of you who really need more um, more guidance. Um, so you can just follow along and if you already got your product from another maker or if you are a maker, you can just follow along here and create along with me on your own. But if you do need a little extra guidance, I do have a few little options on the blog that would be helpful. Not a full guide, but a cheat sheet as well as a de design space file and some measurements and things 
things like that. I'm trying to be really careful to give measurements so that anyone who tunes in is able to follow along without having any problems. So these lined leaves, as far as the technique on these lined leaves, uh, that is linked in the description because I did all of that initial technique on all of these little pieces on layout number one, the video for layout number one, because we created all of these bits that we were going to use on all five two-page layouts. We created those um, in the first video and I talked a lot about a little bit of technique and so um, creating those little things on the Cricut. I'm trying to work out the title. I end up putting the title on the left um, and moving that little girl and actually I decide to reserve uh, one of the gnomes, the little girl gnome, on for my last layout because I still have one layout to go at the time of this video it's actually ready to go but uh, when I was actually creating uh, this layout I hadn't created the fifth layout in the series and I thought you know what I created four boy gnomes and four girl gnomes at the beginning of the series and we're down to these three gnomes so I thought it might be fun to um, uh, carry that gnome over to the fifth one so now I'm just showing you really clearly those strips so that you could see them clearly before all of the other parts and pieces get put into place because sometimes you don't quite know what people have done in the under part um, of the background and so it's kind of nice to see that and so now even though I'm hardly doing any technique on this layout I want to stay true to the series and I want to do a little bit of background blending and inking just in a few little spots that are going to show or that are going to have some more white space around them just as a little bit of filler and to add a little color so it's not so stark white and so I'm using pumpkin with a very light hand and then I'm going to come back over that area with a little gold shimmer brush because we've been using the gold shimmer brush throughout the series. We used it on layout one, layout two, and layout three. So now we're going to use it here on layout four to coordinate our whole series. I like to use similar techniques on my workshops throughout the whole workshop so that not only do we get practice, but it sort of makes the workshop feel kind of uniform and cohesive. And then if you actually use all of the layouts in the series for one theme, it all ties in together. Sometimes I definitely do. In fact, that's why I'm not putting photos on my layout here tonight is I wanted to finish all the layouts and then really think about, I have so many fall themes that I can use that I've talked about in previous videos. And so I kind of wanted to think about all my themes and decided if I decide if I'm going to break my layouts apart and use different themes for different layouts or if I'm going to use all five layouts for one theme. I do have a few um, uh, uh, themes that have a lot of photos that I could actually fill all 10 pages with one theme. Um, I have a, a fall trip to the zoo that would totally work for this. Um, I have several trips to the pumpkin patch and Old McDonald's Farm. I know just Old McDonald's Farm. I have so many cute ones of my grandkids I could fill all 10 pages. Um, I definitely have some fall family photos. Um, I don't know if I have enough of our harvest and of like, you know, our apple picking and then uh, crops and, you know, harvesting crops or haying to do all of them. So I would have to break them apart. But now I'm just playing here with the large line leaves that are actually inked on the edges in toffee. They're stamped tone on tone, tone and I described this in the previous video. Um, and by tone on tone, if it was a limeade pattern, it was stamped in limeade. If it was an espresso pattern, it was stamped in espresso. If it was a toffee cardstock, it was stamped in toffee in terms of the lined leaves. And then I just rubbed with my finger a little bit of goldenrod stickles on the front. And so now I've added that little gnome under the barrel on the right, going to pop it up with foam tape for sure. And just so his little nose or her little nose is peeking out so that one you definitely don't need to make a shirt or uh, hands 
or uh, feet or anything for her, just her upper body, her hat, and her nose. And so that's kind of the fun part about that. When I get ready with all my bits, as you probably saw in layout number one, um, I like to make all the bits for the whole series and it's kind of crazy, kind of eerie and crazy how when I get to the last layout, and you'll see that in my next video, I make whatever is left work. I don't go back and make more. I'm totally guessing. Like I was totally guessing on eight gnomes. I was totally guessing on, you know, three or four each of each of the thin cuts. I was just totally guessing. And and so I create all that and it just works that once I get all 10 pages or 12 pages, I often make 12 pages, uh, once I get them all done and I get to the last layout, I barely have anything left. <laughs> and I love that challenge. I love to say, okay, I am going to make something out of this and then when I am done, I'm done and my little tin of goodies is empty and I don't have any waste. I've used all the little bits and it's so fun. So now layering those extra Cricut, uh, not Cricut, excuse me, those extra thin cut flowers from the gnome set and I actually doubled up the single flower. So I did one single flower in paprika and one single flower in Sundance for every one of the sunflowers and I did the center in espresso which of course I described in great detail on the first video but just a recap of those in case you missed that or you've jumped ahead and I'm getting super happy with it it's just so so cute so I know that I'm going to want to add some more stickers but I'm liking where everything is I don't like that big gap between the vertical photos I think that needs some filler and I think I'm gonna go ahead and take that little gnome with her green hat. I'm gonna take her out and use her on layout number five. That would be just enough that we would have one, one gnome left for the last layout. So now I have thankful and truly off of the sticker sheet that I'm thinking I'm going to arrange on the top of the barrel, which allows me to really see a lot of that cute those cute barrels and I've created these little strips and I believe they are three quarters by four I think three quarters by four is the um, gingham and three quarters by or one half by three and three quarters is the zip strip so let me double check myself there yep that looks right so I have a zip strip off of the season mix-ins which is that kind of mink colored zip strip so that is one half by three and three fourths and then the uh, red gingham is three quarters by four and just adding a little paper piecing in there the strips on the left tuck right underneath the sunflowers and the strips on the right we're probably going to need to add like a sticker or something maybe a round element or some kind of an element down there in that corner I believe of that photo oh it's coming together and I'm so so happy we were able to add Add really cute large cricket pieces and elements for added interest and really this playful fun theme um, and I love when close to my heart comes out with things that bring out our inner child that we can kind of go crazy with I am still someone who does Halloween layouts I don't have a lot to scrap at Halloween I do have all my grandkids I have not all of them about three quarters of them still trick-or-treat it's getting less and less so I'm not quite sure who all is going to trick-or-treat this year or not they're getting older um, and then I do dress up every Halloween still and then um, I am a pediatric speech pathologist and so I dress up for the kiddos every year and then everyone at my work dresses up so so I am a kid at heart so when they bring out these themes that you can kind of go all on or full on fun I love it okay so now what I've done is I've added that circular sticker I'm kind of experimenting here because we need a little something something right there I don't know I'm kind of struggling here you're gonna see me take quite a bit of time here because I'm kind of you know when you get down there's not 
too many stickers and then you're like I wonder I do kind of like the idea of the lime green one though because it draws in the lime green on the gnome's hat on the left. We have the lime aid on the leaf on the lower right. We have the lime aid in the stick gnome sticker there. And I sort of want to tie all of that together. And that's our one of our brand new colors this year. And I just love it. So I'm kind of uh, contemplating what I'm going to do with that. And then I do know that I'm going to need something on the top left photo. It's very blah up there. So I'm going to need some paper strips or some kind of a cute element uh, up on the the left there as well, I think. I'm, I'm, it's what I'm contemplating. So let's see here. Let's see if I can make that work. So I have the wood green sticker on the upper left. I've created a visual triangle that draws your eye across. If you go from the left barrels to the limeade sticker to the right barrels, um, it creates a triangle over all of those inner photos and it really draws your eye in there gonna add a little texture with our cork leaves so what i've done on that right photo is i use the happy harvest sticker and i popped it up and i fussy cut the little hedgehog out of the tag and then i had one little mushroom thin cut out of the mink cardstock um, and i tucked that under the little hedgehog and it turned out so cute I couldn't quite make the tag work that the hedgehog was on. And so by fussy cutting that out, it totally worked for me. So now it's all about playing, kind of trying to add a little bit more texture, make a couple of these lone stickers not look so lonely, and turning them more into a small cluster by adding some cork bits behind them, popping up the little heart sticker on top of the gnome sticker. Let's see here. Gosh, it's coming together and it's so cute. And I love the large elements with still having eight photo opportunities. Pretty good, huh? I think we did pretty good. We have a very simple background with paper strips. I love doing that, having a nice simple base and building upward from there and creating the layers upward. I just love that look and it's just such a such a wonderful way to decorate. So again, as we did in the first three videos, uh, we added goldenrod stickles at the end to make those dots and to add just a little added embellishments there. I hope you had fun. I hope you love this. I hope you'll recreate this um, and just would love to see what it looks like with your photos on it. I'm so excited to see. Please hit the subscribe button and follow and like and shoot me a comment. I'm hearing from all of you really keeps me motivated to keep uh, my videos coming and it also inspires me and gives me more ideas for future content and I just love knowing that I'm sharing the love with paper crafters out there who get me you are my people <laughs> uh, we are uh, we are a different breed are we not we are loving uh, all things paper and color and it's so great when we find our people I love sharing with all of you so I think I am happy. I hope you guys are happy. Let me look. Did we do it? I think we did it. Hooray. All right. I, I hope you had a good time. Happy scrapping, everyone. And thank you for sharing the love of paper crafting with me. See you next time on video number five and the final video in the series coming up next. See you soon. Bye-bye.